Welcome back. This is one of my favorite sessions because I'm a big Nextcloud fanboy. Um, but I won't waste your time. Daphne has put together this great introduction to the app ecosystem and how you can add your apps to it. So we'll let you just take that away. Oh, well, we can let you manage the mic. But at some point, to have that on will be helpful because I'll be taking questions. But we'll get to that. OK. Hello, everyone. My name is Daphne Muller. I work uh, at Nextcloud together with three colleagues that I brought with me today, which are Camilla and Brent, who's over there. Um, I'm a team lead at Nextcloud, uh, responsible for the support, the community developer relations, and a team of eight developers. And Camilla is a developer at Nextcloud, one of the most experienced people that we have around. And Brad works in the marketing team, who prepares a lot of podcasts, but he's also interested in development. So somehow I convinced him to go from marketing to development. So that's why he's here today as well. Um, let me briefly introduce you to Nextcloud. I assume that most of you already know Nextcloud as a solution for file sharing. Um, but it's much more than that these days. It can also do video conferencing. We have an office suite built in um, using Collabra. We have a lot of AI features these days. Um, and we also have groupware solutions such as Calendar and Mail. Um, so uh, it became kind of an ecosystem where we try to have all type of productivity software in one platform. So you stay in control over your data. Um, and it's very uh, open to contributions from uh, community developers. And we have a large app store on apps.nextcloud.com with over 450 applications. So today I would like to teach you how to make an application yourself. And Camilla is going to tell a bit about why it's awesome to work on top of Nextcloud. So as Daphne said, we have a, a really big ecosystem of apps. And we also have a really good um, system for you to get started developing apps because you don't need to take care of authentication, the file handling, and sharing. It's all um, handled by Nextcloud. Um, because we have a large audience of users, we have also a large community of developers. So when you decide that you want to develop an app, you have an idea, you can always search in the App Store or on GitHub for other apps that does similar things. And then you can read the code and check it out how you can develop your own app. So it is an easy entry. So besides, so you can go to the App Store and generate the app skeleton. So you can have a, the base to work with the database, uh, the UI, and function, basic functionalities. It's all there for you to get started. Um, so yes, you can go to the, look at the apps available for an, a good example. We have um, a good set of tutorials for you to get started to, so you can understand the basics of how the apps in xCloud work. Besides the code examples that's out there, you can also look for the documentation. We have a great documentation about Vue.js uh, components that was developed for, by our developers to be used in xCloud on the server and in the applications. I also, we also have a good documentation uh, for the API that you can use. So you can create a very good integration with, as I said, with files, with the calendar, contacts, you name it. Um, so the main technologies that we use is PHP and Vue.js, but right now, um, it, so the Daphne's team has been developing other ways to create applications, like with Python, Rust. Um, it's a big project, it's still in development, but um, that definitely will also be interesting in the future to try it out. Yeah, so for today's workshop, we will focus on the traditional way of making Nextcloud apps, which is in PHP. Um, I know that that's a bit of a controversial topic among developers, a topic I don't personally understand, because it's working great. If you know programming, you can make Nextcloud apps, and that's what we are going to show you today. So this is the plan. Uh, we are going to have a hands-on workshop. Um, we have tutorials on nextcloud.com slash developer. So, um, for this workshop will be hands-on. We uh, 
Camilla, me and Brent will be walking around to answer your questions. Um, the first of the tutorials that I invite you to follow is set up a quick development environment with GitHub Codespaces. Now I know that most of you are Ubuntu users and you might be interested to instead set something up on Ubuntu. Um, but the time span of this um, workshop and the quality of the internet connection will likely not allow that. So I invite you to set up a local environment at home um, and we have a tutorial for that available too. Um, we use GitHub Codespaces because it's supposedly way quicker, um, only 10 minutes instead of several hours, so that's what I suggest you to do today. After you finished with setting up a dev environment, I suggest you to uh, go to the next tutorial, which is develop uh, your first Hello World app. I guess the title of the tutorial already shows uh, what you will be doing there, so no further explanation there. Um, of course, uh, there is no such thing as a computer science conference without technical issues. And of course, uh, Camilla didn't believe me when I said that everything was working flawlessly. So half an hour ago, we tested everything and of course we found problems. Um, the issue is that there seems to be problems around GitHub from the networks of the venue, um, which means that the port forwarding step in the tutorial will likely not work. Um, suggested workarounds are using a hotspot. We have two hotspots available, uh, one from the organizers and one from Brent. Uh, perhaps a VPN connection works, but I didn't try that out. You could also try out your luck. Um, let me know if you're lucky today. <laughs> um, so those are the suggestions. Maybe one of the organizers can share the password for the hotspots. Yeah, but the public Wi-Fi will probably not work. That's why we suggested to use the hotspot, right? So I've set up two of my personal phones as hotspots. If you can, please use your own if you have such the means. Uh, you know, I'm a Canadian, so that's going to cost me some. Uh, but we do have them available. So the SSIDs are Nexus. There's two of them, Nexus and I think Nexus 1 or 2. And the password just being Nextcloud. If you need it, they're there for you. Please use your own if you can. Uh, but other than that, hopefully they work. Try not to like watch movies or something at the same time because uh, obviously limited bandwidth, but th it should work. So if you're having problems with internet, let us know and we'll try to solve it. Yeah, that's what I have prepared for you today. So uh, make sure to wave your hands at me, Camilla or Brent if you uh, have questions while doing the workshop and I suggest you to all take out your laptop from your uh, bag and start trying out the workshops. Uh, back to the organizer. Where are we next? Pardon me? So then, so how would one begin? Well, what is the next step we do? We open the laptop and? Yeah, so if you go to nextcloud.com slash developer, there are tutorials there you'll see. So the one we're concentrating on, the one we're concentrating on is set up a quick development environment with GitHub Codespaces. And we'll see if we can set that up here and do it alongside, but it's, Really, we want to be just going through the room and this be interactive. So if you're taking out your laptop and giving that a try, um, I'm more than happy to be over your shoulder helping you and we'll walk around. And so if you have questions, please like feel free, raise your hand, start talking. Uh, we want this to be pretty interactive. Okay, like I mentioned, nextcloud.com slash developer, there's a list of tutorials if you just scroll down slightly. So we will need two of these that are listed. The first one here, set up a, a quick development environment with GitHub code spaces. Uh, this one's pretty quick, hopefully, given the internet challenges, but um, it's a couple of minutes, so we'll do that first. Um, and the next one we will need is, do you remember where it is exactly? Oh, right beside it. Develop your first Hello World app. So I'm opening the uh, quick development environment with GitHub code spaces. So you'll see this, it gives you a little intro. Um, I mean, I think we've explained we're gonna set up a GitHub code space to do the development quickly. You can set this up however you'd like at home. Uh, multitude of options there, but uh, I'm gonna click in there. Uh, 
Okay, so this is like only a couple steps. I will run through it, but I will try to do it side by side with you. So let me give me a second to balance my screens here, see if I can get this working. So it says, um, yeah, log into GitHub. I think I'm already logged in. If you have an account, I'm just assuming you do. If you don't, of course, I guess step one is actually please create a GitHub account. Um, if you've never done that, Jeff can certainly help you if you need help with it. I'm assuming everyone's okay there. Um, so next, we have this codespaces.new link. So we're going to click there, open a new window, which is great. And there's a bunch of pre-populated settings here. Uh, these are all great defaults. I mean, we're in US West, so all of this is going to work fine. There's an option down here, machine type, which gives you some options, but the default is just perfectly fine. So we'll go ahead and create that. Now that's going to take uh, a little bit, so I'm just going to go back to the tutorial here and see what's next. So this one's actually going through my phone. It seems to be working fine. We'll see what happens at the port forwarding step. Uh, there we go. Okay, so we'll give that a second. Is anyone else at this point yet? Can you raise your hand if you are? There's one there. That's good. Yeah, two, three, four. Okay, you guys are great. You're past that. Yeah, yeah. Keener's over here. Um, very exciting. Seriously. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Let me know when you feel like maybe I should do that and we'll give it a try. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yes, thank you. Everything's easier from down there, it seems. No, I mean less pressure. Okay, I'm going to hit refresh. Hopefully that doesn't screw anything up. Ready? Crossing fingers down there? <laughs> yeah? All right. Okay, clearly, uh, clearly we need to wait longer. So apologize. This is, of course, faster when you're not trying to demo it. Okay, well, let's look ahead, because we can do that, right? Um, so I'm going to flip to the other tutorial, just so that we can start seeing what's in there. Which is the second one, Hello World. So the idea of this tutorial is to just get a little bit more familiar with um, the skeleton app that's provided, it provides a whole bunch, like a template basically, and we're just going to move through it both to set it up so that it actually appears in our next cloud interface, which is actually, I was really proud yesterday when I tried that, I was like, hey, I did a thing. Um, but also then to just get a sense of what files do what and um, where you can begin to inject your own personality and create your own app. That's the whole idea. So in the end, if we have time to follow the entire tutorial, we will get this beautiful Hello World, uh, which I know maybe doesn't seem like much, but it's the start. We're just learning, right? Um, I never got there. Jeff actually did get there. I was too busy uh, solving other issues. Um, so this is a skeleton app generator. So it doesn't really do much, but it does show up in your next cloud development environment. That's kind of the whole point of today is just to get there. Um, <clears throat> so first we have to go to this link and actually generate this thing. So it has a few uh, boxes here that we need to fill in. App name. Uh, there's a very specific app name we need to put, which is hello world in camel case. That is important. 
I don't understand why, but it is, and the tutorial says so. Um, now, Nextcloud versions here, we're just going to choose the highest one, 28. Author's full name, well, I think Brent is good enough. The email address here can be bogus for now. If you're actually creating an app, it's a very good idea to make this a real email address, of course. Uh, so I'm going to say brent at example.com. Now, this issue tracker URL. That's kind of the same deal. Uh, in the tutorial, it specifies that we can just do a test.com for this workshop's purposes. Um, but if you are actually trying to develop an application, it's a good idea to set this up to a place where you can actually do issue tracking. But for today, uh, we found a bug in this form, so you need to put HTTPS, test.com or example.com or anything you want uh, is good enough just to fill that in. And I'm going to say mine's all about security, which is probably irresponsible of me. Uh, and my summary is going to be uh, Brent loves security. If I could type. Now I'm going to hit Generate and Download. That'll download it here. Sorry, these are from yesterday. I'll just get rid of those. So we get this app.tar.gz. So we'll save that locally on our local system. And that's pretty good. We got past that point, so that's great. And now I see my GitHub code space on the right-hand side is complete and ready for us. Now I have this terminal up. I brought that up yesterday, so you may not see that. I don't think it's required. So just because I bounced around a little bit, I want to be really clear. I'm going to go back to set up the GitHub code space environment. So that's this first tutorial. So we were just kind of multiplexing there. So um, let's see. I was at step number three. It says it takes about five minutes. That sounds pretty accurate. Number four, we will see that screen, which actually our screen looks even better, so that's great. And at the bottom of the window, this is the step you'll get caught up on if you're on the local Wi-Fi. So this is doing a slight port forwarding so that we can actually get to our Nextcloud development environment that is hosted on GitHub. So it says here, bottom right window, click ports. So I'm currently on terminal. Um, hmm. Someone might have to help me here. Am I missing it? Oh, gosh. Yes, so ports. Then you will see a list of ports, which is great. That's what we asked for. And the next step is to uh, right click on port 80 at the top here and open in browser. This will actually give us our Nextcloud installation, uh, which should look familiar to those of you who have a Nextcloud environment or have used one before, right? So we get a login. This is pretty exciting. So um, a very secure admin is the username, and the password also admin. And we have ourselves a very, very, very lean Nextcloud. Not very many apps. We've got files in here in the dashboard. In the end, we will have another one, which is ours. So I will set this aside for now. Step number seven, your next cloud will open. I already guided you through this. So admin, admin is the username password if you need that repeated. And that is the end of this tutorial. So that little section. Now we're going to do the actual hard work, which is the second tutorial. And if you remember, the second tutorial is develop your first Hello World app, so make sure you're in the right one. Oh, there. So we actually have a question Great. over here. Great, sorry, so I wasn't paying attention. I apologize. Sorry, I, I just missed the part on where you forwarded the port, if you yes. did. Um, I think it, it, there's, it started explaining it in the tutorial. Um, Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Oh, okay, yeah, I, I missed the part on forwarding the port. Uh, did you have uh, ports already set up, or did you just configure that? I'm sorry, because the AC I still can't understand, but uh, can someone relay the question, or, or can we turn the mic up a little bit? Oh, can you hear me better? Oh, 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 the ports themselves, are they already configured? Is that your question? Yeah. OK. Um, that is actually pre-done for you. When we uh, selected the form, let me go back here. Sorry. Oh, gosh. Oh, things are breaking. This one. 
Uh, let me go back to, so when we downloaded this link at the very top, this form sort of set all that stuff up for us. It's basically an image that's set up at GitHub code spaces. And the ports are already set up in place. So the like frame by frame that I just went through is exactly what you should be seeing on your end. If for some reason you're not seeing that, then we have an issue and we're happy to help you with that, but that's what you should be seeing. So just to repeat for the ports section, this can just go away. Um, I just made sure to click on the ports down here in GitHub code spaces. I had to click, I was in a different uh, section, so I had to make sure to expand it, but I clicked on ports, and this was already like that. I touched exactly nothing, so. You don't see that if you are on the public Wi-Fi yet. Yes, right. If you are on the public Wi-Fi, just to repeat that, you will not see this section. So make sure you have an alternative internet source. Sorry, I didn't realize I was on the public Oh, Wi no, all good. I mean, it's one of those unfortunate things about conferences. So that's kind of a tripping point, obviously. If we can get past that, I think we're in good shape. Did anyone have success with this step? Yes? Yes? Two of you? Two of you? <laughs> that's very, two is very few less than the people in the room, so I just want to make sure everybody's OK. Do we have any other questions? All right, I think we're good. Okay, so as long as we got past that port section, I'm gonna continue, if we're okay with that. It seems like we are. So I'm in that second tutorial now, develop your first Hello World app. Now I did one of these steps, but I'll do it again just to make sure. So it says go to this particular link. So this will generate a skeleton app for us. So when I open that, I get this form, which I filled out a few minutes ago. I think everybody's probably caught up to that. Make sure you fill that out. And you will get an app.tar.gz to download to your local system. So that's the step where I am. I've downloaded that. And I've made sure to call it Hello World in Camel Case. which is this app right here. Uh, let's not open my banking app, thank you. <laughs> so the next step here is to add this to our GitHub Code Spaces development environment. Now, the tutorial has a few steps here because it's meant as a bit more general. We're using the GitHub code spaces part of this. So you'll see there's a 2.1 step. There's a 2.1 AA step. Uh, we're going to scroll down slightly to the 2.1 B using the GitHub code spaces environment because that's what we're doing today just for brevity. So the step is find the apps directory in GitHub code spaces. So I've done that. It's right here, if you could see my screen. <clears throat> and grab our Hello World. Um, I've actually skipped a step. I need to uh, uncompress this. Sorry, I missed that. So uncompress your tar.gz. I think likely we all know how to do that, so I'm going to do that like this. I get a Hello World folder. This is the folder we're going to drag into that apps folder in GitHub Code Spaces. So I'm literally going to grab that, go to GitHub Code Spaces, and make sure I drop it in the right place, which uh, is apps, that apps folder. So when I drop that there, it will upload this to GitHub Code Spaces, and hopefully we can then find it in the list of apps under this folder, and we do. Hello World shows up there, which is amazing. Now we want to enable this very basic skeleton application in our actual Nextcloud interface. So that's the next step here. So to do that, in our Nextcloud interface, which is this nice and simple one, uh, we will go to the top right and click on the user here, which is admin and to the apps link. Give that a second because cell phones. Mm -hmm. 
And then uh, the trick here is to click on your apps in the left sidebar. When we go there, it lists all the apps that are installed. And we will see one here called Hello World. Hey, that's our app. And it is currently disabled. And it is considered an untested app because, well, we haven't quite tested it yet. So we need to select Allow Untested App. And then we will have the ability to actually enable it. Click Enable. And now it's in the enabled list, which is very exciting. And you will notice up in the bar here of our listed apps, we have a new app called Hello. Well, it's called Hello World, but I see hello on my screen. Uh, I mean, I'm really curious, so I just click on it. And so this will be just the very basic skeleton app, at least now in your Nextcloud interface. And we can modify it and play around. Currently, it does exactly nothing. But it, we're in it currently. So here we are. Now, we're going to continue the tutorial to change what is shown here. So I've done a few of these steps in line. So th step number three, enable your app in Nextcloud. We've just done that. So I will scroll slightly here. Your app, should your app should now be in the blue bar on the top with the cog icon. We did see that. And it appears exactly as the tutorial suggests, which is also great. We're in good shape. Now there is some information here, detailed information about what all of the folders in this skeleton app does. So if I go to my GitHub code spaces and I expand our Hello World app, you can see what's included in that compressed image that we uploaded. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff here. And in the tutorial, it describes all of these pieces. So uh, hopefully, this is a nice learning tool. Uh, it is suggested, um, if we're in a hurry, that we could skip this and come back to it. I will do that since I'm on stage. But feel free to, to browse this. I think there's a lot of useful inf information here. Are there any questions at this step? Great. Either that means I'm doing really well or really not well. <laughs> okay, so it describes a bunch of files that are necessary for the app to function. Uh, so we will move to step number five, changing the skeleton to suit our own needs. So 5.1, we can delete a bunch of directories we don't actually need. Now, Camilla, this step, deleting directories, do I actually need to do this to make this work? I don't think I do. So this is more information to. Do it just to be sure. Okay, I can do it. Uh, there are several ways you can delete things. So um, there are some test uh, folders here that we need. They're all listed. I mean, I'm tempted to just use the terminal because that's me. Do you want some help? Yeah, sure. This step is optional, but it'll give us just the essentials that we need at the end. Um, again, it's, it's fine if you leave them. It might be a little bit cluttered. Although if it breaks, don't blame me. Has anyone um, played with PHP before? There's a hand up. That's good. Two hands up. All right. Uh, 20 years ago, well, it's, it's a well-tested uh, programming way. language, right? Beloved by some. Uh, what about next cloud development? Has anyone dabbled with that? We've got several. All right, tiny bit. That's all right. Uh, you're more advanced than I am. <clears throat> the idea here is to introduce some introductory concepts. I mean, for some of you, maybe this is slightly less helpful if you've already played with this kind of stuff. But maybe there's some learning here. Yes, Jeff.
So Jeff helpfully informed us that you can also control click a bunch of things if you want to select them. Um, they've done some wonderful magic stuff to make it feel actually pretty native in the browser. Thank you. You want that gun also click over? If because you want. I know you didn't read it twice. No, it's true. OK. <laughs> we will switch speakers, because I actually don't know what I'm doing. Do you want this? Does this work properly? OK. Uh, we will <laughs> switch speakers, because Brent came up to here yesterday evening over a drink. So we suggested that it would be easier for him to not wing it improvising on stage. <laughs> Thank you, Brent, for guiding us so far. Um, the next step, so we really cleaned up the skeleton a little bit. We removed all the stuff we don't really need. So for this directory, we are for this simple app, we are not going to do any heavy processing. So we deleted the files for that. We also don't have a database, so we are going to delete the stuff for that and so forth, just to make it a little bit easier to navigate. Um, and now we're going to update the remaining files that we need. So we uh, start with the info XML file. That's the directory used for metadata and configuration. So it contains things like the name, description, license, and so forth, and some basic configuration. Um, let's go to the uh, info XML file, which is over here. And then we need to update some things. First of all, we need to update the version. Uh, because the generator uh, put it on 28, but your development environment is on 29. That's the unreleased version of Nextcloud. So if you want a sneak peek, this is where you can find Nextcloud rumors. But today, um, that's not going to reveal a lot. Um, where can we find that? I'm not used to Windows so much. Yeah, over here. 29? No, it's not 29. May I help? Uh, if you can type, then I speak. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be 29. Yeah. And then save. Thanks. What a teamwork. No. Um, then we go to the routes.php file. That's a file that maps the URL addresses of your apps uh, to the right PHP methods. Um, that sounds a bit arbitrary, maybe at the first sight, but when you work with it, it's quite obvious. Um, and there are some routes here that we don't need, so we're going to clean it up so that it works properly. Um, we can clean up these parts and the resources. No. Nope. Can we make this larger? A little bit, yeah. Let me clean up this part. And then we have this uh, route left. Um, if you can see it properly, you can see that the uh, name of this route has two parts, namely page and index. Page refers to the page controller, and that's the file that we're going to look at next. Can you please save it? Thank you. Do we need to remove that file? I don't think so. Do we need to remove the comma? I don't think so, right? Okay. <laughs> is it saved? I believe so. Okay. Oh, the tutorial is gone. So then we go to the page controller. Controllers do basic handling of incoming requests. And you can find them over here in the page controller.php file. And we need to change the content of the file. Can you do that for yep. me? I copied it for you. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, yeah, if you want more imp uh, information about what it exactly does, is that we, we added uh, comments inside the code so you can read in more detail um, what exactly it's doing. But basically, we just adjusted the controller uh, to use the right, the right route in this thing. Um, then we go to the template. Uh, template uh, are the custom pages of your app. So that's the page that's opened when you clicked uh, your app's name in the navigation bar at the top. So here we're gonna make sure we don't see a blank screen anymore. Um, and it's basically uh, rendering HTML web pages. Uh, maybe you can change the content of the file again. Wait, where was it? Templates main page. Over here, this one. I'm not sure it's copied properly. Why is that? Did you copy this? I thought you did. Thank you. Otherwise, we're going to see an error at the end, and that would be embarrassing. Yeah, but you could blame <laughs> Brent. It's fine. <laughs> no, we can blame uh, demo effect. Oh yeah, you're sure we are in the wrong file. Thank Can you. we go back? Thanks a lot. Otherwise we get errors and that would be embarrassing. Because <laughs> I don't know how to find the well, log entries it. on GitHub code spaces. <laughs> okay, we're looking for templates yeah. slash main.php. Yeah, that's Thank you. There. Very helpful audience. Thank did you. Did we change thank it you, correctly back to what was originally there? I believe I did. Okay. But, you know. Good. We have audience who's paying close attention. <laughs> <laughs> Might invite some of you on stage if you're not careful. Uh. Oh, it's done. Test your app now. <laughs> Find out soon. Um, so let's go back to the environment. No, hopefully it works. <laughs> <laughs> and refresh. <laughs> Looks like it does. Can you press the button? Do we dare press the button? Uh. <laughs> Ready? You want to do a countdown? Three, <laughs> two, one. Hey! So we did a thing. <clears throat> oh, this is my first time doing it, so I'm actually really <laughs> proud. <but laughs> High five, Brent. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Um, and you are doing it live on stage, did, unprepared. Did you, <laughs> did you find success down there as well? Yes. I mean, it's Yay. fairly straightforward and kind of copy-pasting stuff. Um, I think Seven the idea success. here is to find success, right? I mean, if I'm feeling proud and I'm here on stage, hopefully you are too. If, um, but the idea is to get a little bit more familiar with some of the folder structures. That's the part I skipped, you know? Um, but please read through that if you're more interested. And uh, now you have kind of a working thing in this development environment. You can tweak it and change it and uh, make it your own, really. Um, now, I won't do that on stage because I don't know what I'm doing. But I think Daphne is going to take over for me. Um, so I hope that most of you have been able to follow the steps. And if you're not finished yet, feel welcome to follow the steps on a later moment. Um, I would like to remind you to not forget to close your Codespaces environment because it's a paid service if you use too many minutes of it. Uh, the tutorial shows how to do so. Um, there's plenty of more tutorials to follow that have the same ease as this one. Perhaps they are longer, of course, because we will go in more detail. But I am not trained as a developer, and I wrote the tutorials, so you can be sure that they will be follow, uh, easy to follow uh, if you only had a small introduction to programming at your university. Um, we have, I wrote several tutorials together with my colleagues, for example, about making a dashboard widget, an integration with another software, uh, integrating settings, and so forth. Um, there are several available. Um, but what Camilla mentioned, I would like to repeat, which is that you don't have to reinvent the wheel if you're making Nextcloud apps. The best way, if you would like to start your own project, is to look at a similar app in our App Store, look at how it's done, and try to manipulate that code. Uh, don't start from scratch. That's really not necessary, because it's an open source project. 
And this way, it's a great opportunity to learn about development, make your apps available to millions of users, uh, maybe come present it at our next cloud conference. Uh, there are so many opportunities available, and you don't have to deal with complex things like authentication or files. Um, if you need some help, we have a very active forum on help.nextcloud.com with a special developer section, which I also read myself regularly. So if you have questions, you can be pretty sure to receive answers. Um, and of course, I would be very happy to see your app in our app store if you have managed to finish it. Um, Lastly, Camilla and me also give talks. Uh, Camilla has a talk tomorrow on Saturday evening about how she developed an app to track your period. And I will give a talk on Sunday about uh, ethical AI. Um, so that's what we have prepared for you today. And definitely uh, raise your hand if you have any questions. Brent, you have a question? <laughs> uh, OK. so. Once we've done this tutorial, where's the next place to go? What do you think is the next logical place for someone who's like just dabbling in this? I would suggest to follow uh, other tutorials that we have created and go through them step by step. You will learn how to make a fully fledged app, add widgets, do compiling of your code, and so forth. Does that answer your question? Is yeah. that what you meant? No. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. You did well. Nice. Um, you too. Okay. Once I have my app, how do we get it into the App Store? There's a documentation on that on apps.nextcloud.com. If you click on the developer button, it says upload your app, and you will be guided through the steps. And is there like an approval process or something once that's, you've gone through all the steps? No, you just need to get a certificate on GitHub. But that's quite straightforward to do. Just open an issue, and the documentation will tell you exactly where. Any other questions down there? I can keep coming up with a whole bunch. Yeah. What's your name? Yes, it does. Great, thank you. Uh, you thank mentioned you. that you did PHP before. Um, I'm curious if you'd be interested in like contributing a little bit to Nextcloud. Yeah, sure. But is there? Okay, here's a different way to ask that question. Is there something you wish it did that it doesn't currently? <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> that's you. pretty good then. <laughs> Lovely. Well, that's good. Nice. That's great to hear. Uh, how does your family family like it? Nice. Wow. Okay. We go forward to compliments to the colleagues. <laughs> um, any other questions? Anyone? Uh, pointing over here. Yes. I think the question is: What if you wanted to con contribute outside of PHP or to? to the PHP specifically. Because um, you were asking this fellow um, about his contribution, like, oh, would you like to contribute? Uh, what if you did want to contribute to PHP? So let's pretend he said, oh, yeah, I'd yeah. love to start <laughs> contributing. Uh -huh. So it's like a choose your own adventure. So we're going to go on the other path. Uh, I don't actually know that answer. Yeah, <laughs> Does this work? OK. Uh, so there. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> we are attached. Oh, <laughs> so sweet. Anyway, uh, how to contribute? The Nextcloud code is entirely on GitHub. It's a GitHub repository. So you can try to contribute to the GitHub core. Um, and you can also try to contribute in the form of an application, as which we've just shown you today. And we have several good first issues available if you would like to dip your toes into it. And I can also guide you to repositories where we offer active mentoring uh, in case you would like to do so, which are the less active ones like text and other repositories managed by my own team. Great. Thank you. Uh, I think my biggest suggestion would be start small. Pick like something you're passionate about. Maybe it's, I don't know, an emoji selector or something like not super complex. Start there, get used to kind of the process. And then you will inevitably meet people and help contribute together. Um, and that's just like 
super powerful reinforcement you know to our human emotions uh, and then you'll just kind of grow from there but start small uh, you'll kind of get integrated into the community, which I think is a fabulous community, and hopefully those of you who have agree with me. Um, and then you'll just grow from there, and you'll be part of the family. Starting with an app is probably the easiest. So besides PHP, you, if you are interested in JavaScript, so the whole front end is using Vue.js. So this is also another way. And this, as Daphne said, they are good first issues. And I would think that the back end of the core of the server is very complex. It's hard to get into it. But there are a lot of UI issues that we have that would uh, involve um, code, coding, you know, fixing and working with the code base. But they are much simpler to get into. You know, the, that would be my suggestion to JavaScript is another way. This leads me to a reverse question, and it's premature. Just something to think about, and for all of you, too. Um, if you go down this road and you find yourself really enjoying contributing, would you consider submitting a talk here for UbuCon next year to tell the story of your journey? Just something to think about. Yeah. I have a question. Um, Suppose there's one of the featured apps that I really love and I use and I see something like you mentioned. Sometimes there are user interface refinements that could be made. Do you find much uniformity with the process for engaging with those or is that really up to the lead developer for that app? It depends a bit on which application it is. Most, uh, if it's an application that is maintained by the company employees, then it's a bit more uniform than if it's maintained by a volunteer because obviously there are differences in how much time someone can allocate. Um, I have personally found that pull requests are always appreciated everywhere. In my case, one of my favorites is uh, collectives. It's just such a flexible toolkit for myself and for groups and I have just come to love it. And when it was promoted to a featured, which it is now, I was like, yes, okay, this is awesome. So uh, that is still an independent project, though it is featured, is that right? No, Collectives is uh, company maintained. Oh, excellent, yeah. It, it deserves it. There's really, there's very little else out there anywhere and to have that integrated with all the consistency provided, that's been a real godsend for so many projects I work on. Nice, that's great feedback. I think we've often also seen examples of applications that were community developed that are such great ideas that they've just become a part of the core Nextcloud as well. So you never know. You never know. Documentation. Do you guys have a special need? Is there a place we can go for people who write uh, text but not so much code? Is there is there a place for onboarding those people? Yeah, we have a documentation repository as well where documentation edits are easily uh, created. Is there a team lead they should seek out or just submit pull requests or what's the best process for that? You can just commit pull requests. <laughs> well, and I think part of that question is what if I'm not a pure developer and I still want to help Nextcloud? What can I do, right? Documentation is one of them. Helping out at conferences, we have someone, Charlotte, helping at our booth who's just a community member who's helped a ton and helps us in multiple ways. So any way you feel like you may be able to help if you're inspired like we want to chat with you and make that happen because we find that that's kind of the most exciting part about open source projects like Nextcloud or any other is like working together to make amazing things happen so if you think you can help and you're not too sure where to go just contact us somehow anyhow uh, if it's on Twitter or if it's like through GitHub or if it's personally here at the conference and we'll try to make it happen. I think uh, it's not always obvious where to kind of come into a project, but we're super friendly. So just come say hi and then we'll see what happens from there. Now, in addition to you and the talks you're, be, you're all providing, um, this, you will, will you have a booth on the expo floor? There is a booth there, yeah. And I, will, will Yoss be there as well? Yoss is currently, I think, giving a talk uh, but he's there as well, so if you know Yas, he's worth, if you don't know Yas, he's worth uh, meeting. If you know Yas, he's worth giving a hug to. Um, but yeah, so we'll certainly be over there. I'm 
I, I haven't actually been. I think there's a bunch of swag and stuff, so, uh, but come say hi. Are there any other questions for development stuff, specifically? Because I know a few of you have kind of dabbled a little bit. Yeah? Uh, we'll get a mic to you if you don't mind. Well, it's for the people watching, yeah. Is there a style guide for if you want to make a new app or extension that perfectly meshes with existing maintained mm -hmm. ones? Yeah. Maybe Camilla can answer this one. <laughs> Is a weird microphone? Yeah. Um, yeah, that works, right? Yeah. Um, so we have uh, Vue.js components that already do, do that, does that for you. So, it, and if you look into the documentation, you can include like icons, and it's all like pre, let's say, pre-styled for you. So that's what we usually suggest people to use. That's the easiest way if you want to keep it all. Of course, you could do your own thing. Right? It is not like, I guess, not written anywhere that you cannot. <laughs> but we have those components that you can use, and then it's going to make everything look like the next cloud server. OK, cool. OK. Are there any development specific questions that I can't answer? <laughs> no? But Camilla can. <laughs> um, but what about Nextcloud general questions? Also, no. <laughs> I mean, I, either that means we're. Yes. Uh, uh, I'll come to you if you don't mind. Just talking to this thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, this is my. Um, I've heard of Nextcloud, and I've always wanted to dabble with it, um, like in a home lab and stuff like that. Um, I saw there's a couple different ways to to deploy it. I was kind of curious. Have you guys tried to deploy it on Kubernetes? Um, I know there's a like I think VM images that you guys have prepared. Uh, maybe running it in in Docker or in a, in a container. Just kind of curious what what that journey has been. I'm not sure I fully got it. Something Kubernetes and how to deploy Nextcloud. Yeah, the the, just to repeat the question, it was uh, if you haven't installed Nextcloud before, but you'd like to, and maybe you're uh, familiar with Kubernetes or Docker, well, what are the paths, to, uh, uh, possible options to install Nextcloud? The easiest way to install Nextcloud is using the Docker all-in-one container. Bear in mind that if you look at Docker's website and you search for Nextcloud, that the top option is not the one you should pick. The top option is known to be a bit more complicated, requires more setup and configuration, and has some issues. The Docker all-in-one is the one that's maintained by my colleagues and works really well, and which we also recommend to customers. And that should install the whole Nextcloud hub with all the features that we have. Camilla, do you have something to add to that? I okay. do. Um, now, if you're familiar with Kubernetes, it probably means that you want to customize you know, your own database or things like that. Uh, I, there, I personally know several people who are running it on Kubernetes. And so it's definitely possible you're not the first person to want to do that, which is a good sign. Uh, and there are, I forget what they're called, the Kubernetes um, sheets. What are they called? Can you, someone remind me of that if you're familiar with it? Sort of like a Docker Compose. Anyways, there are people doing this, and that there's an active community doing Kubernetes stuff. I'm just digging into that because you mentioned it specifically. Uh, but there are also options like the Raspberry uh, Nextcloud Pi project, which started out for Raspberry Pis, but has developed into an interesting project as well. So depending on your specific needs, there's likely a community project out there if uh, you know, the all-in-one isn't flexible enough for you, although I would say start there because that thing is amazing. Uh, but if you're looking for something else, uh, you're likely not the first person to want to look for that. So look around, do a little searching or ask us, and uh, we can point you in the right direction. Since we are at Ubicon, and being both an Ubuntu fanboy and a Nextcloud fanboy, uh, have you tried Snaps? because snaps give you a one-line way to get the whole package. And there are ways to integrate snaps for 
broader scale deployments through Juju. So that may also be another option worth considering. I would definitely go with the vendor's recommend recommendation for large scale deployments because that's what they do all day and they specialize in that. For my office where I'm installing on a few or when I'm working with clients, we generally use snaps because not only is the install easy, but the backups are, if you'll pardon the pun, a snap. It's really just stop it, snapshot it, start it again, and I'm there and I've got a backup. I can move anywhere I need to. And I've even moved it from machine to machine really gracefully that way. And it's been kind of a kind of a convenient system. I like snaps. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I've been running it for a long time as a snap. And uh, how, how long is long? About three years. OK, I got uh, you beat. And it's, well, I, I would expect. Um, but I've literally had zero maintenance. It's just running. It updates. I mean. It, it was it was seamless. I am running it in a container, but I just created an LXD container and I did snap install, next cloud, and that's it. And it's been running seamlessly. Yeah, I kind of went the same route uh, five or six years ago, and I chose the snap as well. Um, and it's been running great. And there's a great community team behind it that just sort of test things and make sure that it's really stable before they do the updates. And I have same thing. It self updates, and I've never ever had an issue with it. So. Yeah, so the snap I think is a great option if you uh, if you love snaps. Uh, if you don't love snaps yet, I would suggest try it. I did not like snaps when they came out because we, you know we all struggle with different packaging formats. There are so many. And when I heard snap, I like okay, I like Ubuntu, I like where this thing is going. Why are they throwing snaps at us? And so I was on the fence, and I'm reading about it. But then because everything I do is so dependent around Nextcloud. When that snap became available, I thought, okay, I have a new installation to do. I'll try snap. And it was Nextcloud snap that made me a snap fan. Whoa. It is really a nicely maintained snap. H how long has your snap been running now, then? Uh, four, at least four years huh. longer than that, All I right. think. Yeah, much longer. Uh, I'm curious if anyone else is running Nextcloud. Do you have any preferences or things working for you? Um, yeah, I don't know. I've been running it uh, on a snap on an Ubuntu server running on AWS for like maybe three years. And yeah, pretty much no maintenance. I frankly forget that I need to look at it. And then <laughs> a user will occasionally have a problem and I'll reboot it and it's good to go. So yeah, that's my experience with it. Nice. I've been running Nextcloud for I think about Four years, also on Ubuntu server, just bare metal, and it's currently sitting under my desk and is the main data store for a lot of the processes at work. Cool. Thanks, John. Uh, do you think you should have done it a different way, or is that working? I originally tried a Docker image. I don't remember which one, and that did not work at all. I don't remember if the snap was available then. Probably was, but I was trying to do everything more bare metal because I found a lot of the third-party packagers at the time did not work at all. Yeah, things are evolving all the time. These days, I think it's pretty good. Any other questions, general questions? Any questions at all? Do you want to hear us talk about anything? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't. All right. So the question right, was, apps. everyone in the crowd, what's your favorite app on Nextcloud? Like the thing you absolutely cannot live without. If all the apps vanished, what's the one? Photos. Photos. So we have photos over here. So how many photos do you have in your? <laughs> Trick question. Oh. More than a terabyte of photos is what I heard. Uh, anyone else with an app that you would absolutely? Files would certainly count. Yeah, thanks, Chris. <laughs> Over there? Podcast syncing. Podcast syncing. So is it the G-Potter? Uh, yeah, I use that too. I love it. So one of the favorite ways is to use Nextcloud as a central repository to just sync uh, podcast listening stats and also like your place in various podcast places using the gpodder sync client 
app on Nextcloud, which I have just discovered recently, and I agree with you. It's amazing. Uh, any other favorite apps out there? Okay, so WebDAV, CalDAV, all the like de-googling stuff. I know you, Jeff. So, so that stuff it changed my life too. Uh, got off Google and used Nextcloud as a central sort of personal life syncing platform. Appointment scheduling. Appointment scheduling. I was just rambling. <laughs> the, the appointments calendar, I like it. I could go on for a long time, but I'll spare everybody. But it's nice that it's integrated with the calendar I'm using, and it touches with the contacts I have. So most of my clients are already in there. I am in there. My calendar is in there. And it integrates with the rest of my UI. And it's just it's a godsend. Using third-party things just seems now silly to me. Nice. And what, what got you to try switching over? Like, what was the incentive to try something new? Because every time you need an appointment scheduling link, it pops up a fresh tab into something that looks nothing like what you're doing. And I'm like, I'm a little tired of that. I don't want something that looks like what I'm doing so that people are, this is me. This is where you schedule an appointment with me. I want to integrate that. And then it showed up. I mean, it's been there a while. I didn't notice it till last year. But when I saw it in there, I stopped using everything else immediately, set it up, and I have people happily using it. And, and end users say, I really like your scheduler. <laughs> well, that's a good sign. Uh, anyone else with an app that you absolutely love? Yeah, over there? Uh, hang on, I'll come to you, because I think that's just a better experience for everybody. And I don't mind that. I don't know if it counts as an app more than like a feature, but the Android like file sync is really nice if you're using like AGIM like Authenticator like for 2FA because you could like sync your database just directly to your server and not have to worry about like uh, if like your phone dies or like your net like, like if it corrupts or something you have like constant backups on your NetCloud and whatnot. Nice. So I heard 2FA in there in the syncing as well uh, from your phone specifically. That's amazing. Anyone else want to share kind of apps that make you happy? <laughs> Daphne, you got a favorite app? Uh, I use Nextcloud Talk almost every day in my work, every minute. Uh, I think it's <laughs> the favorite app I have is the Giphy implementation. It was developed by a colleague of mine who gifted it to me as a Christmas present. Uh, because I really enjoyed sending gifts to him all the time. Uh, does that count? <laughs> yeah, so how can people get this on their next cloud server? It's an app in the App Store, so you can just install the... Uh, you look, can look for the Giphy thing in the App Store and just download it. It's super easy. And that allows you to uh, add gifts to your talk conversations, which, I mean, come on, who doesn't want that, right? Yeah, the recent uh, launch of my team is also a meme generator, a meme generator if you're into that field. So. <laughs> <laughs> I said to Frank, to the CEO, listen, this will massively improve the productivity of my team. <laughs> uh, anyone else with, I don't know, random questions? They don't even have to be Nextcloud related at this point. Will will inspire others hopefully, but um, so obviously I'm using Nextcloud a little bit, and on the desktop it is absolutely gorgeous and performant and beautiful, and on my phone it is often gorgeous and beautiful. But then there are some things on phone that are just not as refined as they are on desktop. Um, I'm assuming, given the thoroughness of everyone involved, that this is something that there are teams focusing on, optimizing performance and little interface things. But can you tell us more about mobile optimization. Yeah, do you have an example specifically? Um, Load time for collectives. Okay. As just one. So your question is, are we working on performance for mobile for the apps? Thank you. The, the apps where you have native apps, like you have files and you have talk, and talk is so well done, and files is well done, and notes. 
but as a heavy uh, deck user and as a heavy um, uh, collectives user, and, and the integration of everything in the web interface, I would love to just use the web app. Mm. And so it, it would be great to see, uh, to hear that if there's you know, a lot of interest in making the web app really awesome on mobile. I'm not entirely sure that's currently a very high priority, although I know that there have been some efforts in making sure the design is accessible on uh, mobile as well. But usually the approach is to create a native application uh, because of the ease of use of a proper application. And I believe DAC has a native application for mobile already, which you could probably check out. Yeah. That's, that's a start. And the one thing I, I love about web apps is that it, uh, for one, with this feature set being as rich as it is, having, one, having the web app available means I don't switch between apps to do stuff because it's all integrated. So that would be- Yeah, it would be all, in one place. Yeah, yeah, all the stuff I love about the desktop is all there. And the other one is the development cycle for native apps is just longer. You've got to do it for two different platforms and then you're beholden to whatever the policies happen to be that week at that app store owner. And so web apps are like free, open, it's all between me and the vendor and there's no middleman telling, gatekeeping any of that. So I, I, I'm kind of a web app fan, wherever that's a practical solution. Nice to have options, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm curious, oh, there's a question over here. Give me a moment to uh, come join you. Oh, hang on, mm -hmm. come on. Since we're at Ubicon, is there, is there, you guys see any hope for fixing the desktop client, the indicator? The indicator is kind of like a two-phase menu and some settings are on this like hidden menu that you go to and some are in the settings. And it, I know I understand it works on other platforms because that's the actual pop-up, but in Ubuntu it's actually a menu. And so there's a hack there and it, it feels really awkward, I would say. Um, is there any chance of actually designing the desktop interface to match Ubuntu? Take it. This is GNOME specifically. You're you're talking about. Would you desktop? Yeah. Yeah. Well, GNOME. I mean, it's it's customized GNOME. GNOME doesn't have app indicators, so it's a Buju desktop. It's just you know, there's different flavors, so I wanted to make sure that we're talking about the same ones. So GNOME is there. Uh, the interface is a little bit clumsy. It sounds like uh, for the desktop application specifically. You mentioned menus were a little bit so-so, and the. So do I understand your question correctly, that you're using the desktop client on Ubuntu and you have issues with the user interface? Correct. And what kind of issues do you exactly have? So when you click on it, you don't get the actual interface. You, you click on a button to click on a menu item to get the interface, which is bad. And so then the, your default thing is you go to settings, and then there's a lot of things in settings, but there's actually some settings you actually can't set up Sorry, you have accounts. to speak a bit slower. I'm not a Sorry. native English speaker. I have no clue what you're saying. So, I mean, I, I guess just use the desktop client on Ubuntu. You'll okay. hate it. Um, <laughs> it's because what happens is that you can't get to the actual interface um, from the thing right away. I can, I can show you. No, I'm not yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. I have the client installed here, but these little app indicators, when you click on them, you can get little drop-down menus. Yes. So there's something wrong with the menus on the desktop app. I've never tried the desktop app for Nest Fox. Okay. Uh, but he's talking about these menus don't do the right thing in the desktop client. These little things up here? The little icons yeah. Sure Sounds right. like a live bug report, which yeah. I think is worth some attention. So well, in GNOME, there's so some. As far as I know from the complexities of uh, working for each you know, um, Linux desktop interface, I know there are GitHub issues for it. And, but it has not been prioritized to be working at the moment. I would, I don't know, because for instance, for um, for Ubuntu and like from some distros, there has been a lot of conversations. Um, well, there's a lot of people of the community doing work, like packaging for different, you know, distros and yeah. Um, but in, in this case, I would expect something probably coming from the community, but Internally, like in the team, it has not been prioritized to be worked on. But I know there are GitHub issues for it, and this is has been a long, com has been a conversation for a long time. But I'm sorry to say, there is not really 
progress there right now. That's unfortunately the reality of having many, many apps and just a small team. <laughs> Uh, any other questions, anyone? Yeah, I'll come to you. Give me a second. Um, I could certainly Google this, but since we're here, <laughs> I'm just curious, um, like if I want to customize the dashboard, like I basically want to pare down, slim down the experience that my users see when they log into my Nextcloud server, because there's a bunch of extra stuff that we're not using yet maybe later, but right now I kind of just want to funnel them into files and like even within that just into one particular folder. What would I, where would I start? Like what files would I need to edit to customize the, the dashboard experience? I think what you could consider is perhaps developing your own dashboard widget or even uh, making the dashboard app all from scratch in the way that you like it. A dashboard widget is quite straightforward and there are many examples and even a tutorial that you can follow on the topic. The yeah, the other thing uh, which I think you're talking about the same thing is uh, in the last release we gave the ability to modify the apps that are listed on the top and change their order. And so you mentioned funneling your users to files directly. So the very first app that you have in that list at the top, and you can find this in the settings, uh, the administrative settings, but also the user settings. Um, and so the very first app that you put in place, say files for your instance, when people log in, that's where they'll be taken. So in previous releases, it was straight to the dashboard if you had it installed, uh, but now you can customize that. So I think that's exactly what you're looking for, yeah. So I would say dive into the settings uh, in appearance, I believe it is, and you can find it there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, That's time okay. to upgrade. <laughs> uh, you can also, in the um, apps list for the administrative settings, you could disable the apps that you don't want. Yeah, so many of them, even the pre-installed ones, you can also disable. So that's a nice way to clean things up as well. Yeah? Any other questions? usability or hopes and dreams, issues that we should fix? Lunch. Lunch. <laughs> uh, I want to say thank you. Oh, there's a question way back. No, no, you had your hand half up. Come on. <laughs> That's commitment already. I'll, I'll come to you because there's live streaming and stuff, so give me a moment. Oh, it's, it's uh, yeah, all good. All good. Canonicals, an, uh, Canonicals announced a web app integration for the desktop. We're using Snaps. Um, do you guys see using that, or how do you see using that to integrate Nextcloud more into the desktop experience? We don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the desktop developer doesn't know, then I also don't know. <laughs> okay. It's, it seemed exciting for a lot of web apps. I was just curious if you guys were going to use it. Oh, it's a cool idea. I think worth investigating. Yeah, thank cool. you. Anyone else before I go to the front and have to come back? Yeah, right here. Great. <laughs> um, I'm planning to move to Georgia in 26 or 20, 27. And um, once I get there, I'm planning to put a rack in my closet in the office and uh, put Nextcloud on there and uh, play around some more with it. So uh, how hard is it to download the the project and install it locally. Uh, what software do you have running on, on this future rack? Um, I'll, I'll probably be using Linux Mint. So Linux Mint has a base operating system and uh, having Nextcloud installed into it. I think you have many options, actually. So, um, well, Camilla, what would you recommend? I think I have some recommendations, but. I just said uh, that I would expect that Docker all-in-one would work. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a setup that we have that is quite easy to run, and it, you can get the basic apps and everything running in a very short time. I second that. And there are other options. In Linux Mint, snaps are disabled.
Okay, I would say um, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to say hello to us, now is a great time. Uh, or come to the booth. But also, yeah. there's a booth. I don't exactly know where it is. Do, can we direct people? Okay. <laughs> we will all find the booth together that way, apparently. <laughs> and uh, uh, happy to say hi there as well. But please, don't be shy. Like, come up, say hi, and more than happy to make friends. So thank you for being here, and hopefully this was helpful. Thank you. Thank you.